um, to transmit the Sunday schools that we something that we do every morning at this time for all our churches and today we're going to present here to the brethren a continuity of uh, our studies of uh, the book of revelations and this study will begin with the letter to Tiatira but related to everything that came from Pergamos to Tiatira or towards Tiatira so therefore the brethren need to pay attention opening the Bible the book of Revelations, chapter 2, uh, so we can study uh, about Pergamon and Tiatira. But before, we're going to have uh, an introductory word about the topic with Pastor JLT. <coughs> beloved, I want to greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We are, we are happy for knowing that the brethren, brethren have been interested in in the Sunday school studies and want to give uh, one more information. Today we have a statistic that allows us to say that maybe the greatest majority of conversions or of the understanding of new brethren that come from other churches uh, it is, this growth is related to the studies that we have been doing in the book of revelations everywhere the story uh, the story of revelation is being always related to to facts prophetic events and that the, the everybody turn into catastrophes and the church doesn't need this argument we don't need this argument because we don't need to see a catastrophe in order to become Christians to accept Jesus we don't need this but those are signs there are events there are facts that follow the history of the world, of men in the world. None of it will be done. Nothing was done. Nothing will be done without the signs, the prophetic signs. And the word of the Lord says the following I will not do anything without inform you, without giving you instruction, instruction to my servants and the prophets. And this is a wonderful thing for the church. It is not in the events and the occurrences that we are witnessing whether they are economically social political geophysic those are facts their judgments their occurrences that are natural for us why because we are not worried about showing catastrophes in order for people to become christian the catastrophes they are out there they are um, incredible signs for the church so the church might say the time of God is being fulfilled it's not the chronos it's not not because we arrived to 2000 but because all the signs are refer to the events of the last days of the period that precedes the rapture of the church all the signs are being fulfilled when we enter in the book of revelations we're not enter in a book so people get scared so that people are afraid of the things of the facts of the occurrences the occurrences they will continue the church will continue its march and we're going through the difficulties that the goal the world is going through however the church has the escape which is the blessing of the holy spirit as long as the church takes advantage of this great blessing many take advantage of the blessing of the Holy Spirit in order to make miracles and cures and that's all right it doesn't cause any harm but the work that the Holy Spirit wants to do at this time is to uh, prepare the family the house and prepare men for the moment which is the rapture of the church so what is ahead of us 
It's not the circumstances, they're normal. Everybody gets sick, everybody lives, everybody dies. Those are, are not the things that we need to be worried about. But the main cause is that the church has a commitment with the Lord, which is not a commitment unilateral, but it is the result of the blessing of Jesus in the life and the heart of the Christian. It is when the Christian is waiting for this great moment of when they will meet with the Lord, where the things of this world were going to continue, our responsibilities will continue, our trials, they will increase. It's our daily breads, our own necessities and the infirmities that afflict us. But what brings us joy is to know that we are being prepared for a new journey and that the great journey, what awaits us, which is the turn and the long life. So, my brethren, the book of Revelations is open for us, not so and not to cause people to have fear about it or to make people to feel uncomfortable about, about it. Not at all. All of those that are hearing this right now shout, give a shout of praise to the Lord and thankfulness for the blessing of, of us being able to open the book and having the Holy Spirit showing to us our great necessities at the moment in which the church lives. The, the church that lived in the past and now lives, nothing changed. However, the events of the church of Ephesus, the fight against the revealed word, and the events in Smyrna, the fight of life, uh, uh, struggle of life and death, and definition, life and death, and the third letter into, to the church of Pergamos, is a perverted marriage. The church got mixed up with the state and maintained the name of Christian. That's what the text said. You have the name of Kevivis, but you are dead. So Christianity is not a religion, a pagan religion or Judaic religion. Christianity is an operation of the Holy Spirit. If they, it doesn't exist, there is no Christianity, there is no gospel. So you have the name of Kevivis, you, you, your name is Christian, but you, you're dead spiritually. That's the great problem. And today we have the letter of Tiatira. The letter of Tiatira. So the brethren see. So the first uh, moment is the father. The second is the, the body that was killed there, sacrificed in the name of the doctrine. The third is the Holy Spirit, the faith. It, it seems like it, it was over, it's extinguished. So then begins the religious principles of human interests. And you see the connection that exists between the letter of uh, uh, a letter of Pergamos, which the word means a perverted marriage, Pergamos, a perverted marriage, and the introduction to the church of Smyrna. The word Smyrna, uh, I'm sorry, Tiatira. The word Tiatira is linked to continuous sacrifice. What happened after this moment when Christianity changed? The church changed the way it in which it serves. The services uh, change in the way they adore the Lord because it introduced in, inside of it the political interests and even of the religion where man philosophically understands that he is the Lord of the world and that he can solve all his problems, including his spiritual problems. So Christianity placed itself there in a position of highlight and what I mean is that we are an institution, a religious institution. We are fighting in this world with the pagan religions, with any other group. But we are Christians without the new birth. That's the greatest difference. So there always existed a faithful church where the new birth was fundamental. And the new birth vanished when the church got, mi got mixed up with the state and when the pagan principles entered into the church with the, the experience of conversion. So the, what the pastor is going to say now is going to bring a couple of questions. The topic of this letter is fundamental for us today because firstly we saw the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now it is related to the church. 
and we left a, a question on Manaim. I don't want to speak about this. Actually, I promised that I was going to speak about this today, but but because the group that was there in Manaim was so small, and there is a larger group here that is listening to us now. We're going to leave the question here, the topic. Uh, we're going to leave this topic for for the following Sunday school, where we're going to make an introduction to the letter of Tiatira, and we're going to begin to understand the operation of evil and also the, the disposition of the Holy Spirit to act in this church. So we're going to see many expressions and words that are frequent, like, for example, the word work is here in the entire letter, and I'm going to ask a question later. The pastor is going to ask, ask a question regarding this word and many others that we would like the brethren to conclude a few that were in the seminar here and I heard the, the question that they have the measure measure of their explanations and the top is going to be approached here about the Tiatira so that they may be able to formulate an answer to that question that we asked in this other seminar which is I know your works and also I know your works in the church of Tietir so the, I know your works is in every letter and in the letter for teachers I know your you know the difference I, I asked this question to the, sem the other seminar nobody was able to answer because the answer is it is in a group of understanding regarding the letter of Pergamos and regarding the letter of Tietira. So I'm going to hand the word back to Pastor Gilson so that he can continue our Sunday school. So my brethren, pay attention to the teaching of this wonderful message today. So my brethren, you already saw here the question that was made. It's going to be for this next Sunday school so this question will be recorded to the brethren and throughout this study that we're going to have today the topics today the brethren for sure will be able to figure out the answer to the, this question what is the difference between the expression used in the other letters I know your works and the for church specifically well I really know your works. So the verb is the same, but try to see the prophetic meaning and the brethren will find the difference. Very well. So let's go to our uh, topic today which, uh, and let us see the first question. Going back to the studies to the Church of Asia and now to the Church of Tiatira in chapter 2, verse 18 to verse 29, which were the doctrinary mistakes that are being established clearly between the Church of Pergamo and the Church of Tiatira. So this question is just to introduce the topic of the letter to of Tiatira. So where which were the doctrinary errors that are being clearly established between the church between the churches of Pergamo and the Church of Tiatira? The brethren will you'll look for this 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 answer. We're going to give you three minutes. Three minutes so the brethren will find this answer reading these two letters and finding here this doctrinary errors that have been established clearly in these two church and we're going to go back in three minutes so let's read these verses so now we are going to identify which were the doctrinary errors that were made there. We have three minutes, so we need to read quickly the verse, verse from verse 12 to 29. 12? I think he meant 18, from 18 to 29.
Non, non. Pastor, eles me deram o número, o nome, mas não tem tempo. Os computadores estão ocupados. Eu fico traduzindo, não tem como dar. Tem foto também, né? Tem foto, tem nada. Se tivesse dado com antecedência, não um dia. Did you find? Can we continue? Time's up. Did you read and found? Who read everything? Who read it? Oh boy. <laughs> I'm gonna give a few min few more minutes. The only to verse twenty nine. from verse from eight from twelve to twenty nine We're going to be going to Breton uh, all the way to the back there. I don't forget you. Right, like Kaysen. I never forget you. Oh, there is a guy that wrote for Cruzeiro there. Oh, nobody told you to be uh, uh, of the Cruzeiro team. You define? Well, let's go. Which were the doctrinary mistakes that were established clearly in the Church of Pergamos and the Church of Tiatira? So let's go. Who found a mistake? So where is it? In 14, 20. Verse 12. Verse 14. So let's go. But for the Church of Pergamos, so it's 14. But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. So this is Pergamos. Very well, but let others to answer. Who found on the back there? 
Helena? 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 Somebody else? Somebody that is not rooting for the Cruzeiro soccer team. 21? 20. Read, Ronaldo. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you uh, allow that woman, Jezebel, who called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immoralities and eat things, sacrifice to idols. Nevertheless, I have uh, that Jezebel. Uh, what does he mean that you tolerate Jezebel? The verb is tolerate. Tolerate. What I have against you, those that tolerate, uh, the ones that allow Jezebel, which is a woman that calls herself prophet, prophet, a prophet to deceive my servants, those that allow, those that permit. Right. Many times you allow it. Sometimes you let people beside you to do wrong things, you tolerate, you don't alert, you don't teach, you don't correct uh, my brother and sister. You are on the wrong path. This path will lead to perdition. You have to help them. So here it is, what I have against you, those that tolerate that Jezebel, who called herself prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immoralities and eat things sacrificed to idols. So sometimes you don't do it, but you see the mistake and you are allowing it. You are, you are, you are convent. You allow it. Very good. It's not the. It's, uh, it's, it's not a um, healthy growth. It's advice for this life. Uh, advice only show the good things. Lies. No, no, está parado. Okay, let's go. Who knows does it live? Pay attention, my brethren, we are back to show you the answer to the question related to our first question today for this morning. So the answer is the following. The doctrinary mistakes that were established clearly between the two churches, Pergamo and Tiatira. So the answer is here. So in Pergamo, is there the first doctrinary mistake, which is the doctrine of Balaam, chapter 2, verse 14. Was objective, the objective of this doctrine was to put a stumbling block and lead people to idolatry and prostitution. So here it is in Pergamo, the first doctrinary mistake. But there is a second doctrinary mistake, which is called the doctrine of the Nicolaites, which is chapter 2, verse 15. It's a doctrine related to the flesh and the power of the flesh. So here it is in Pergamo. So in Tiatira, we're going to find the prophecy, the deceiving prophecy of Jezebel on chapter 2, verse 20. This prophecy is mentioned Jezebel, and the expression of Jezebel is to show that the continuity of these two doctrinary mistakes, prostitution and idolatry. So here is the answer. So now we're going to have a, a quick com um, s statement from Pastor Jedoti about this answer. So my brethren, in first place, Pergamos, it speaks of the doctrine of Balaam. Balaam was a prophet that had um, um, a task from the part of the Lord to speak, that bring a message to the people. However, because of money, because he wanted to receive gifts, he exchanged the message. So he exchanges spiritual for the material. So when he makes this exchange, when he exchanges the spirit for the material, he does exactly this. He uh, plays a stumbling block for the Israeli people and open up a way for idolatry in relation to Israel and see idolatry. 
believing in idols in the word of the Lord the word is the, uh, the word is actually prostitution you committed the mistake and remain in it to remain unfaithful to uh, an agreement uh, to what was prophetic you transform into cultural intellectual rational which would not work here so that's how it is so that the the donkey or balloon that had nothing rational was an irrational animal was the one who reacted to the prophet so today if in fact the prophet had uh, ridden the donkeys for sure they wouldn't none of them would have been alive because the donkeys would squeeze them against the walls so stumbling blocks idolatry and prostitution so what is important here is that they place a stumbling block here but here here it removes faith this is the more to see that the faith is dead that's over so there is no need for faith to preach so to preach the message that was in the head of Balaam there was no need of faith so here it shows clearly I'm sorry here the faith is, goes away so here in this case of the church of Tiatira what enters what enters is a, a deceiving prophecy saying the following everything that Balaam said is true so it's idolatry yes that's it that's what it is so prostitution yes so then they continue so the question that we ask today which which matters to us what matters know about Balaam I never met Balaam or Jezebel I don't know about her I know that there are a lot of people with spirit of Jezebel that's what I know but what matters to us here today is to know that if the prophecy that is in our midst is deceiving if it is not deceiving we're going to have the answer afterwards the brethren is going to answer the, the following question so let's go with one of the next questions so very well my brethren let's go to the next question we're going to have answer to previous questions so here it is still going to the studies of the letters of Asia let's go to the question about the Church of Pergamo so what was the instrument used by the Holy Spirit to react to the doctrine of Balaam and to the doctrine of the Nicolaites in the period of Pergamon the Nicolaites in the period of Pergamos. so what was the instrument used so the brand we're going to look for the verse and wait and look for what the Holy Spirit used in order to react to this doctrine there's these two doctrines of Balaam and the Nicolaites in the period of Pergamos so the brand is going to examine the letter to the program so I'm going to give you actually my three moments so now three minutes the brand is going to answer this question I'm going to go back in three minutes so we need to read again verse 12 to verse 6 17 now let's let's see if that's the answer Did you find? Klein, you already found. Did you find Elena? Let's go. What was the instrument? Repentance. What else? Klein said the word, the sword in my mouth. What else? Everybody agrees? The, the sword of two edges which is the only thing that we have in our hands that defines the doctrine that defines where we are that convinces us of evil is the word right why is the word why why the word is a text that defines it very clearly actually there is a song heaven and earth may pass but my words will never pass everything falls to the ground every argument 
Everything is forgotten, but the Word of God remains forever. Ideas of man, ideas, good ideas, miracles, even miracles, you know. Sometimes a person receives a miracle, is cured, and then vanishes. It's interesting. In 16, as I have the judge, it's interesting. The result of this for our lives is on 17. He who has an ear, whoever repents and allows the Holy Spirit to act, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden men to eat, and I will give him a white stone, white stone. It's a sentence of deliverance. They place a white stone and a black stone. If the person is condemned, condemned, they give the place a black stone. If the person is free, they would put a white stone. So I'm going to give you a new name. A new name was written, which is written to whoever, to those who don't know, but only to know those who know. Amen. You are in agreement. So let's go, Elias. Well, my brethren, uh, we're going to see now the answer to our question. In order to, for us to figure out what was the instrument used by the Holy Spirit in order to react to the doctrine of Balaam and to the doctrine of Nicolaites in the Church of Pergamos. So the answer is here in chapter 2, verse 16. It says there, the promise of the word. Soon I will come and against them I will fight with the sword of my mouth. So it's on verse 16, chapter 2. That, why is that? Because, in fact, those doctrines, they went against the Word. They went in opposition to the Word. The Word of the Father, the Word of the Son, the Word of the Holy Spirit. As, uh, according to what the, the letter was sent to Tiatir, which is the Word of the leaven, uh, three measures of, of, of weed, uh, three measures, the Word of the Father, the Word of the Son, uh, the Word of the Holy Spirit. Now, so in Tiatir, a woman, rises up with one measure of leaven and mixes this leaven into the three measures of wheat. So it was an structure that was opposing to the, the word. So now the resource used, the instrument used is the sword, this, the sword of my mouth. So the living word, the word revealed by the Holy Spirit. And since the opposition was against the word, now it is showing here the erection of the Holy Spirit so that the word may prevail. So to all days, the great blessing is that the living word, the revealed word, will prevail in our days. Do you want to say anything else, Pastor? The word is, it speaks of the living word and the word of life. So now we understand what is the word of life and the living word. What is the word of life? The word of life is what in product, product of life that is in the word. But the living word is when this product of life uh, takes possession of my life and it transforms my life. That's when it becomes a living word. Amen, my brethren. So let's go to our next question. Uh, our next question is, is this. Let us go to the letter of Tiatira and the same structure of the question. So what was the instrument used by the Holy Spirit to react to the the deceiving prophecy in the period of Tiatira. So it's the same structure of question, but now in, for the letter Tiatira. The brother is going to find out what, which was the instrument of the Holy Spirit to react to the deceiving word in the period of Tiatira. We can give you three minutes for the brother to give it, to give it an answer. from 18 to 29. <coughs> I'm going to read from verse 18 to 29 and find the answer to the question, what was the resource of the Holy Spirit to fight against the deceiving prophecies that were given to the 
the church of uh, Tiatira. Did you find? Who found it? All the way to the back there. Who found it? You can say, Paula. 25. If you. But hold fast what what you have till I come. So what he wants, what was the instrument used by the Holy Spirit to wreck the deceiving prophecy? What was the, ac the reaction, was the consequence of those who were, the, the result was to those who were giving room to the deceiving prophecy. So you can say, Ronald. Very well, it's death. So let's go. The 27 is the reward. So pay attention, there are upon man two consequences, right? If he is away from God, there will be a judgment that will lead to death, eternal death without God. That's what it is from verse 22. Very well, from ver verse 22 onwards. Yes, exactly. For those who are giving room to the deceiving doctrine of Jezebel and all of this, there will be coming upon them the depart complete departure from God. But, and it says there where Paul said, and, but to those that retain uh, uh, the faith until I come and the ones who overcome and keep my works I'll give them power over the nations so then comes the judgment and it comes the consequence to those that are in the Lord maintaining the doctrine retaining the eternal doctrine the eternal gospel those that are uh, departing from evil or going away from the appearance of evil rejecting all of this that the world is offering very well the getting mixed up and all this confusion so exists here there are here two consequences two judgments to those that are away from the Lord and to those that are in the Lord right so the instrument here that we understand is not death it, it will be the judgment is the consequences the result right let's go Well, my brethren, I um, hope that with three minutes you may have found the answer to the question, but I'm going to help you here with this answer that speaks about the instrument used by the Holy Spirit in order to react to against the deceiving prophecy. The prophecy that we see in the previous question related to Jezebel, which taught and deceived the children of God. So here in Tiatira, well, in Pergamon, the instrument was the word. In Tiatira, the instrument are the judgments. So the judgments are clearly here on verse 22 and verse 23 of chapter 2 and to the letter of Tiatira. So the brethren were able to see there this judgment and the Lord even saying, Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed. Now, kill her children and all the church shall know that I am he who searches their minds and hearts. So, so thou put them in their bed. And those are with there who have great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. So here is the form in which the Holy Spirit will act with judgment 
in this structure of deceiving teaching regarding the word. So they're teaching and deceiving my servants. So the expression used there in the structure of a uh, uh, government of Jezebel. So the brethren were surely able to find this answer. Any comment, Pastor? Would be uh, an additional few remarks. So Jezebel is speaking about an unfaithful church. Why? Because it usurped the government. It usurped the government that was constituted, which was Ahab. Ahab was a king. So she, Jezebel took the place of of Ahab, Ahab and determined how Israel should behave. It's the same situation. So the church, the government is the Holy Spirit. The king, the king, the Holy Spirit was pushed aside and Jezebel entered. What did she do? She put leaven in the three measures of wheat. So what characterizes the church of Tiachira was the growth. It was an exterior, external growth. It places what of human interest. So a church that apparently grew, grew with the name of Christianity. But the text says you have a name of who is alive, but you're dead. You're alive with the name of Christianity, but you're dead because you don't have the Holy Spirit. So Christianity became just a religion without the Holy Spirit. You're alive, but you're dead because you don't have the Holy Spirit. So we're going to see here Jezebel, therefore, is a woman a woman in revelations in the new testament is related to unfaithfulness the church of christ is the bride so the bride in the book of revelations is very clear how the bride dresses up and so now we go to chapter 19 of revelation you see how the woman dresses up and who carries who conducts this woman is the beast is a power which is not the power of the Holy Spirit so it's a topic that we're going to speak about later evidently but it was clear that Jezebel took the leaven but there is a leaven that is inside which is a brand new samosa that comes from inside out the leaven of the woman it goes from outside in to inflate for appearance so she sh has shown that everything that man wants appearance comes to please the taste of the customer which is man the enemy came and placed in the presence of man this great wonder which man wanted to appear to to have appearance because in the past men will show up and uh, find with sword with tears and its end was to be destroyed it was death here church church didn't need this so the church seemed to be the own of the minds there was no even need for no law so the church is the owner and tells when it needs to happen and people have to accept so that's why there are so so many dogmas and things that everybody knows it's we should not be worried about this so let us continue with the sunday school we have 10 minutes so we would have one extra question but we're going to leave this for the, the next sunday school i'm going to say to our ushers and deacons and pastor that they have a lot of things a lot of uh, content for their messages tonight they're going to speak of what uh, they're going to speak of, about the faithful church and about the unfaithful church they have many topics many messages there are, uh, they can use as reference for their message tonight if it is necessary the pastor you didn't if you didn't have time there is only 10 minutes left okay so prolong a little more than 10 minutes we're not going to do this because our satellite has a time and it depends on uh, the time zones so the pastors, uh, they are not responsible. They, they don't have the, the necessity to close, to finish the service. There are a lot of people that's, that go to s parties and they spend hours. And here in Sunday school, we can extend a little longer. But here on the broadcast, we, 
but it's just 10 more minutes because I don't want it to be too tiresome. Oh, there is a question for the women, right? Was the, sec the second question going to be left on the board for the women on Wednesday to answer? So, Sima Braden, as we are bringing it to a close, there are some information here. We have today in our Sunday school counted with the presence of the, of the participants from the group of work and production and broadcast of the satellite. We also have the presence of Pastor Carlos Pimenta. And reminded there is uh, an event of evangelization in the area of San Jose dos Campos. A group of youth have doing uh, evangelistic work on the streets and is showing here a work with children and this month is being dedicated to the children. So on the streets of the city in San Jose dos Campos, evangelistic service. We also have an uh, um, event of evangelization on the Tripis border of Colombia and Peru. And there, there is a Paso Artini. We wish everyone the blessing of God and that the brethren are prosperous in everything. And I say peace to the Lord to everyone. Let us stand up. Let's pray, finishing. Amen. Did we forget anything? What? Amen. What? Promotion? What about today? Nobody told me anything. What promotion? <laughs> Let's push it to October. Oh, maybe se September. <laughs> Ten minutes. I don't. I'm not sure if we're going to have time. Amen. Hey, Brethren, let us open a text in the Bible and look. Look to. Look to. I'm not going to preach. Look to verse 39. It says, So when, when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to, to their own city, city of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with this wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Amen. The wisdom that the Lord gives us is the one that remains. Because we begin to know it's something that nobody can have on their own, which is a mystery of knowing the project of God, of knowing this mystery and accept and walk in Jesus and our children they are privileged because they begin to uh, listen to the Word of God that remains forever amen we're going to begin by calling our daughter uh, our little sister Gabriela Pereira to come here to the front the teacher can also come. The teacher. She is being introduced in the class of the children. Right, Gabriela? Right. So, Gabriela is going to uh, answer. She's going to sit down very well. She's growing up. Right? That's it. Want to kneel down? No. Okay, you can kneel down. What is it, Jesus? And ask the deacons in the church to be praying and with uh, laying of hands. Glory to Jesus. 
You want to close your eyes, Gabriela? Right. Lord Father, we praise your name for a little sister. She has been chosen by you, Lord, to live this gospel. We glorify you because we know that you have protected her, protected her life. You have taken care of everything. And we ask that your word remain in her heart. All of it, Lord, that she learn in your house through the word, a revealed word, through the teachings. And everything that she learned in, your in her house with her parents was that she may make the right choice, which is to continue in your presence. It's a prayer to say, glorify your name for her little life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can sit down now in your, uh, your place. Yes. So now she's officially a child, right? In the group of children. So now from children to in the intermediary, there is a, a group, uh, a big group. <laughs> hey, Caleb, Caleb, Tehaz, and Jacob. Caleb, Tehaz, and Jacob. Are you ready? That's it. Yes. Two heavyweights here. Amen. May God bless the teachers. <laughs> You kneel down, you can kneel down. Thank you, Jacob. Close your eyes. We can pray for them. Lord, we glorify your name. Amen. Amen. You can stand up. Let's go. Jacob. Amen. So serious. Oh boy, so serious. As the teacher to receive them. Teacher of the intermediary. Amen. All right. Now sitting down on your right place. So now for the children of adolescents coming from the intermediary, Tyler, Tyler, Senna, and Joshua Pereira. Oh, very good. Amen. Are you ready? Very good. Three years of age. Now three years. You, the God is, uh, the Lord is going to bless you. You want to kneel down? Ask the Dick and Evander to pray for them. Lord Father, glorify Lord your name this morning for this so great blessing that we are living. We ask you that you may bless your children. They are kneeling down in your altar. So that they may never be f forget of this moment. That this may be uh, a moment in their life that they may never forget. So that they may never deviate. But they may remain in this path. This wonderful path. That they may give 
heed to the teachings that we'll receive from your part, Lord. Bless your children. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can stand up. May God bless you. Amen. Ask the teacher of the adolescents to come and receive them. Amen. I think that adolescent, adolescent like the most is to sit down there and to leave from here and sitting behind the praise group uh, for them is the best thing. And now, now for the youth uh, coming from the adolescents, the mothers, if if they want, they come come with the children to take, come here to the front to take pictures. Right? Oh man, the teachers are going to have a great loss. Six. Six at once. Look. And for the honor and glory of the name of the Lord, all of them want to baptize. Amen. It will be a great blessing this coming month in April. A baptism. We're going to call here our sister Gabriela Figueiredo. You can come here limping, no problem. Here at the front, our oh, sister Talia Sena. Our brother, Kendrew Ferraz. Yay! <laughs> hey, Kendrew. Our brother Gabriel Machado, Eric, we're going to pray also for our sister Luana of Melo, who is in Brazil but probably may be watching, and also Gabriel Machado who was not able to be here, amen. You can kneel down. Lord to Jesus, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to ask the Deacon Marcus to pray for them. I want to praise you because your glory is being manifest amongst us and our hearts overflow of joy, Lord. We have seen them from the day they were born and now we see them growing to the group of youth. My children, and this morning, for my eternity, fire came from heaven to, to fire up your hearts. I make a promise to my servants, to my daughters, that are receiving the life of my servants so that the love that will be in your hearts for the life of each one of you. So that your hearts, I leave in your hearts the promise, a promise of um, delivering my heart into each one that was promoted this morning. Uh, tell that it's a new phase that has begun in your life in your spiritual walk you have grown also in grace I have paid attention to your lives and you have received grace and this grace of being in my presence Lord and I bless your lives and I want to make you every day strong servants and that you may be able to deliver deliver may be able to deliver my inheritance and I tell you that through this blessing 
I will be multiplying lives in our midst. Glory to God. God confirm. Confirm your words. Give comfort in the hearts of the children. We rejoice with them in this promotion. Give glory and hallelujah to you in this celebration in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go to Jesus. Amen. You can stand up. Amen. You know, don't grow more. Amen. Growing too much. Yeah, yeah. Now you, you can go back to your uh, to the your seats. Today, six thirty um, youth meeting. But brethren, there's nothing more gratifying to the pastor for the pastor to see a result like that. Answer to prayer that the Lord has given us. Amen. Let's sing a song. Yes, the children, they... Now, group will prepare a song. The brand can sit down. We're going to have a word of the direction to the Lord from part of one of the teachers and one of the parents. Lord, at this moment, we glorify your name. Lord, we, we praise you because it's good to see our children, our intermediary, changing uh, classes for this new phase in their lives that they're entering. We praise you, Lord, because every day, I've been, I've been able to see your strong hands uh, upon our children and how you have taken care of them, have sustained them, facing with so many things that have come upon them, so many things being offered to them, but you have kept them standing, you have kept them uh, on this walk, and our tears are tears of joy to see the victories for this new phase in the life of our, our small ones, we know that you continue sustaining them. You praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Let's stand up, my brethren. Our Father, receive our service, Lord. Our adoration to you. And so that you may prepare your church, your people, for the service that we're going to have later this evening. And set, that you give us the boldness to invite, Lord, those that need to hear your voice, those who need to surrender to you, those that need salvation in Jesus. As a church, Lord, bring an awakening to us so that we may be closer to you, so that we may want more the eternal blessing that we can only find in the Lord. We praise the Lord for this spiritual celebration because we've seen our brethren, our children in your presence and even better because they re remain in your presence we praise the Lord because until this point you have helped us we have not lacked your direction, your sustenance your hands uh, laying upon us take us home in peace Lord is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus Jesus, Amen in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. Meeting with Group C. After assistant, now 6.30. Um, meeting with the youth and adolescents and whoever else want to be here, the parents. I'd like to ask prayer for the brethren to pray for the seminars. There are happening in the region of Russia, Ukraine, the region of East Europe. There are pastors there. They are watching and participating in the seminar. And on the weekend, we're going to have seminars in Europe so that you, West, that you may be praying for this, those events so that the Lord may be uh, confirming and the, the Word may remain the heart of lives. Life is, may surrender to the Lord. Anything else? Amen. So I'll see you tonight. Peace to the Lord.